Hi gang, the High Lords of Terror are the mysterious council of individuals at the very top of the Imperial power structure. The ones who decide where its vast armies will fight, where its fleets will sail, and endlessly bicker about who's the most powerful, but recent scandals and in-world events have made them considerably less mysterious, so in this video, let's ask, in Warhammer 40k, who currently makes up the 12 High Lords of Terror? So, in Warhammer 40k, the High Lords of Terror have been the de facto rulers of the Imperium for 10,000 years, since the end of the Horus Heresy and the internment of the God Emperor of Mankind on the Golden Throne, a council of 12 high-ranking officials who debate the issues of the day and decide on all high-level, I guess, Imperial policy. They're the highest level of what is known as the Senatorum Imperialis, a chamber thousands strong and filled with high-ranking imperial officials and the representatives of sectors, segmenti, and all the different obscure organizations that make the Imperium up. Each of these 12 High Lords is the leader of one of the most powerful organizations, and it's here we start to see a few problems. The Imperium is a colossal, ancient, and extremely bureaucratic government made up of thousands of different departments, each with their own sphere of power and who jealously guard it against all the others. And all of those departments want to influence the actions of the Imperium at the very highest level. And there are way more than 12 of them, way more than 12 big ones. Because of this, while there are always 12 High Lords, which departments of the Imperium occupy those seats is somewhat flexible. Some organizations are just so incredibly powerful, such cornerstones of the Imperium, that they almost always hold one of the seats. In total, around nine of the places are considered more or less sacrosanct, held by the same department for millennia. When the incumbent dies, their successor within that department takes over the seat. These nine sacred places are the master of the administratum, the leader of the imperial bureaucracy, and up until recently, often the chair of the whole council. The Ecclesiarch of the Adeptus Ministorum, the Space Pope, the Fabricator General of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the de facto ruler of Mars, the Grand Provost Marshal of the Adeptus Arbites, defender of the Lex Imperia, the Imperial Law, the Master of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, the Astropaths, without whom interstellar communication would be impossible, the Master of the Astronomicon, the great psychic beacon that allows Imperial ships to navigate the warp safely, the Pattern noble envoy who represents the concerns of the Navis nobilitae, the navigators, so without the two of those interstellar travel would be impossible. The inquisitorial representative to the High Lords, representing the watchful eye of the Inquisition, and finally the Grand Master of the Officio Assassinorum, a different sort of watchful eye, I guess. The remaining three positions are then more flexible, and they can be held by any number of senior figures of the Imperium, which ones are dependent on the needs of the time, or on which organization currently holds the most power, and also on a colossal amount of backstabbing and politicking behind the scenes. Common holders of these seats might include the leaders of various military branches, the Lord Commander Militant of the Imperial Guard, or the Lord High Admiral of the Imperial Navy, the Lord Commander Solar in charge of the military forces of the Segmentum Solar and thus the Defense of Terror, the Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes, or the Abbess of the Adeptus Sororitas. All those three places could be taken by more civilian leaders, various car Cardinals of the Holy Synod, the body that elects the Ecclesiarch, the Chancellor of the Estate Imperium, who keeps all the Imperial records, or the Speaker for the Chartist Captains in charge of Imperial trade routes. Certain organizations, the Night Worlds of the Questor Imperialis, or the Chapter Masters of the Space Marines, aren't represented. They're considered too far from the control of the Imperium to have a say in its policies, though at times of great danger, some Space Marine chapter masters have occasionally taken up the role of Lord Commander to coordinate the various armed forces of the Imperium. 
And this is all good, that's the way it's been for ages, but this millennia-old system has recently been shaken by a number of events in the ever-expanding timeline of Warhammer 40k, events detailed both in rulebooks and campaign supplements, and in Black Library novel series, and those books have given us quite a good idea of who exactly the current 12-ish High Lords are, and how they got there. So spoilers here for the following books, but these big events are. In the Vaults of Terror series, set near the start of Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade, it's revealed that certain ancient technologies used in the Golden Throne are not only Xenos in design, but also failing, and that a coalition of High Lords had conducted secret negotiations with Drakari homunculi in an attempt to replace those parts. As you can imagine, that ended with a number of deaths and changes of position. Then, at the conclusion of the 13th Black Crusade, Cadia fell and the Great Rift spread across the galaxy, cutting off psychic communication in an event known as the Noctis Eterna and unleashing hordes of demons across Terra. In response, the High Lords split again over the decision to remove the Edict of Restraint that bound the Adeptus Custodes to the Imperial Palace, and also over the decision to largely abandon the defense of Terra in favor of securing the palace. And those are detailed in the first Watchers of the Throne book, The Emperor's Legion. And those events were then swiftly followed by the return of the Primarch, Robute Gilliman, who was promptly declared Lord Commander of the Imperium, an Imperial Regent, positions that made him the chair of the High Lords and allowed him to push through sweeping reforms. Hundreds of lower ranking Lords were removed from the Senatorum, and five of the High Lords were directly replaced by Gilliman's preferred candidates, all the better to support his new Indomitus Crusade. And then finally, after he departed on Crusade, a coalition of existing and deposed High Lords, unhappy with Gilliman's reforms, attempted a coup, naming themselves the Hexarchy and forcefully attempting to take back control of Terra. They were stopped by a combination of the Custodes, the Imperial Fists, and an awful lot of assassinations, as detailed in the second Watchers of the Throne book, The Regent Shadow. So, busy few years, but it does leave us in the position of knowing a lot more about the current holders of office than we ever did before. So let's go through all of that and piece together who the 12-ish High Lords are through the medium of this modified tier list structure, because although it's not actually a tier list, if I put something like this in the thumbnail, people click on it. It's as good a grid as any, I suppose. Our tiers for today are NH tier, which means not a High Lord, or maybe not a High Lord anymore, though you might have thought they were. H tier, an actual High Lord of Terror. And G tier, which is where we'll start with Robute Gilliman. The return Primarch is both Lord Commander of the Imperium, which gives him control over the Imperium's armed forces, and Imperial Region, which gives him primacy in civilian matters, and as such, he is the chair of the Council of the High Lords. He's in a separate tier, though, because it's unclear if this actually makes him one of the Twelve. In either case, he rarely sits in Council, since his time is mostly spent on the Indomitus Crusade, where he is attended by a Council ex Terra, a council of representatives from all the other High Lords that accompany the Crusade fleets. So, putting him aside, on Terra, the most important place on the Council is held by Violetta Roskavla, Master of the Administratum, who is relatively new to the role. Her predecessor during the 13th Black Crusade, Urthu Hematalian, was a staunch conservative and a member of a political movement called the Static Tendency, who believed that the Imperium was perfect and should never be changed. This, of course, was a massive problem during the Noctis Eterna and the Second Siege of Terra, when it became clear that the High Lords really needed to make some quite big decisions to save the planet. So when Gilliman returned, Hematalium was one of the first to go, and that led to him becoming one of the ringleaders of the Hexarchy's failed coup. Hematalian was killed by Imperial assassins. Violetta Roskafla is much more to Gilliman's taste. A native of Inwit, home planet of the Imperial Fists, she previously commanded the Departmento Munitorum, the department that organizes the Astra Militarum. 
and so she fit in with Gilliman's desire to fill the High Lords with members from a more military background. Next on our list is Trajan Valoris, Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes. The Custodes had been missing from the Council for millennia, but when a seat was left vacant by Brack, the deceased Chancellor of the Estates Imperium, Valoris was persuaded to take it up, just as the 13th Black Crusade spread across the galaxy. This was part of a big push by the then Chancellor of the Senatorum itself, Lev Tiran, whose idea it was to rescind that edict of restriction that held back the Custodes. The removal of that decree and the taking up of the seat by Valoris left the Custodes in a position of power within the Imperium that they hadn't held for millennia, and it was happily accepted by Gilliman. Third in the H tier, the current Fabricator General of Mars is Ud Udia Raskian, doggedly holding onto his seat since well before the 13th Black Crusade. Raskian is another High Lord who is rarely seen in session, though in his case that's because of his extensive augmentation. The Fabricator General is the size of a small manufactorum, and moving him anywhere requires considerable logistical effort. Raskian was in favour of the dissolution of the Edict, and was also a major player in the Drakari negotiations around the Golden Throne, and seems to be the only High Lord who emerged pretty much unscathed from the scandal. Also, despite some people touting Belisarius' call as his inevitable replacement, Raskian continues to enjoy major support on Mars, and Call is of the opinion that he couldn't replace him even if he wanted to. Okay, the current Ecclesiarch, leader of the Imperial Faith, is Eos Ritira, a native of Ultramar recently elevated to that position by Gilliman. Her predecessor, Baldo Slist was another conservative reactionary who was removed by Gilliman and who later became part of the Hexarchy and was eventually killed by assassins. Ritia is known to be a lot more reform-minded which should keep her alive a bit longer. Cleopatra Arx is the current inquisitorial representative. Known as a reformer even before all the events above, she supported the dissolution of the Edict, dispatched operatives to reveal the plot with the Drakari, though she was understanding of the issues involved, and during the Second Siege of Terror, she was the originator of the Arx Doctrine that saw much of the planet abandoned to demons in order to preserve the security of the palace. As a relatively flexible and practical High Lord, she's remained in power through the return of the Primarch. Also, one of the coolest names of all the High Lords definitely should have been a Mechanicum character. Also, in the world of cool names, Zlatad Af Kerapliades, another born survivor it seems, is the master of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, serving since way before the Black Crusade, and is another relative reformer, actually originating that plan to release the Custodes along with Lev Tiran. His former underling, Lucius Throde, is the new master of the Astronomicon, replacing Leops Franks, the previous master, who was the architect of that plan with the Jakari, but was killed during the expansion of the Great Rift, which caused numerous issues with the Astronomicon itself. Lucius Throde, a transplant from the Telepathica, now has the daunting task of trying to repair all that damage. The current Paternoval Envoy from the Navigators is Kadak Mir, and is another newcomer, promoted to position by Gilliman. His predecessor, Oila Lamia, was actually removed for being too much of a reformer, even for Gilliman. She supported the removal of the Edict to free the Custodes, but also pushed for sweeping reforms to the rest of the Imperium too, including removing the Decree Passive, which is the only thing that vaguely keeps the Ecclesiarchy in check. Kadak Mir, the new envoy, is seen by Gilliman as being a lot more cautious. Fadix is the name given not sure if real, to the current Grand Master of Assassins. A predictably secret individual, he'd generally abstained from votes on the Council, which often placed him in the position of being a tiebreaker. Fadix supported Gilliman and the Indomitus Crusade, and during the attempted coup by the Hexarchy, actually worked as a double agent, working with the Hexarchy to uncover all the other conspirators, and then deploying Calidus and Vindicar assassins to murder them once the full extent of the plot had been revealed. And the most recent highlight Lord is another surprise one. Morven Val is the current abbess of the Adeptus Sororitas, a role that doesn't often hold a place on the High Lords. Young for someone in that role, Val was a Celestian in the Order of the Argent Shroud until being made abbess by the Ecclesiarch at the start of the Indomitus Crusade, so that would have been Eos Ritterer, the current Ecclesiarch, who apparently thought she'd be easy to control. However, her general refusal to involve herself in any of the politics of that role 
and her dedication to re-establishing contact with lost orders across the Imperium impressed Gilliman so much, he then gave her a seat on the High Lords. But she's another one that holds her office from afar, permanently on crusade across the galaxy. Which of the seats she was given is unclear, because there are a few more names in the mix that had recently stopped being High Lords. Five conspirators were killed during the attempted Hexarchy coup. We've already mentioned Urthu Hematalian, the old master of the Administratum, and Baldo Sliss, the old Ecclesiarch, who were the two deposed High Lords, but the three sitting ones were Avaliza Drachmar, the old Grand Profos Marshal of the Adeptus Arbites, Merelda Pareth, the Lord High Admiral of the Imperial Navy, and Mar Av Ashariel, Lord Commander Militant of the Imperial Guard. Of these three, Mar Av Ashariel is an interesting one since he was a newcomer, recently promoted by Gilliman in place of the previous holder of that seat, the disgraced Speaker of the Chartist Captains, Kanya Danda, who was involved in the whole Dracari affair. Ashariel was an eager Astra Militarum general who supported the Indomitus Crusade, but for whatever reason, also joined the Hexarchy coup and was killed by assassination. All three of these jobs would have been filled by their successors, but we don't know if their role would still count as a High Lord. Gilliman certainly wanted those roles in the mix because they were military ones, but then he hasn't been on Terra for a while. So who knows? Finally, there are two more names to mention. In the Psychic Awakening series, there's a brief mention of a High Lord not named in any of the novels, Theramestes Zempire Kleng, who was known as a great supporter of the Custodes, though it doesn't actually say what role he held. This is pretty contemporary though, so Kleng might still be a High Lord. There are a number of roles that he could hold. And finally, despite appearing in this art of the High Lords of Terror, Lord Commander Sola Leontus isn't a High Lord at the moment, at least as far as anyone can tell. His job does allow him to be one, and he's pretty central to the whole Leviathan storyline, but at the moment, it doesn't look like he is one. So, there we are. The 12 High Lords of Terror at the current time seem to consist of somewhere between 10 and 15 people. If we take the names, we definitely know, including Clang and including Gilliman as one of them, then we do get 12. Maybe that's it. But that assumes that these three positions haven't been kept on as High Lords, which seems to be against what Gilliman intended, and would be particularly weird for whoever the new Provost Marshal is, since that's one of the ones that never changes. But that's all the information we have. Mostly from Chris Ray in the Black Library, the Vaults of Terror series has now ended, but I don't know if there's plans for another Watchers of the Throne book. Maybe Chris Rate will tie up the loose ends and we'll be welcoming Provost Marshal Klang in the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to hear more about the history of 40k and how it's changed over time, well, there should be a video just coming up to the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, like, subscribe, or join the Patreon where you can get early videos and vote on what we do next in our book club. See ya!